praise the Lord. It is good to be back. I just want to just jump into what I'm sharing with you every morning because time runs away from us so quickly. There's a song entitled Living for Jesus. The songwriter said, Living for Jesus, a life that is true. Striving to please Him in all that I do. Yielding allegiance, glad-hearted and free. This is the pathway of blessing for me. O oh, Jesus, Lord and Savior, I give myself to Thee. For Thou, in Thine atonement, did give Thyself for me. I owe no other master. My heart shall be Thy throne. My life again, henceforth to live. O oh, Christ, for Thee alone. Living for Jesus. Every one of us who have trusted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, as we find ourselves alive in the morning, our desire should be to live this life, this day, for Jesus. I closed last morning in our devotion in sharing with you the purpose of vision. Let me just pick up a little bit where I close and then run on and build on that. I said, first of all, the purpose of vision, it is to visualize where you are going before you get there. To have a vision is to know where you are going before you leave port. Anybody can steer a ship, but not everybody can chart a course. Every leader who is called upon to lead, whether an organization or an organism, should have a clear vision of where he or she is going. Moses is a perfect example. He knew where he was supposed to take the children of Israel. God gave him the route and where he should enter. They all left Egypt to enter the land that was promised to them for over 400 years. But when they saw difficulties ahead, the leaders under Moses of the people persuaded the people to follow them rather than Moses. And as a result, they wandered for 40 years without a vision. For 40 years, and many of them died. Why? Because they refused to follow God's vision that was presented to God's man. Isn't it true? Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. I have noticed something else. When I speak of the purpose of vision, it is to venture into victory before you start the contest. That is to be able to envision the overcoming and the prosperity despite the mountains of obstacles. We are told in Numbers chapter 13, verse number 30 and verse number 31, and Caleb still the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it. For we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than us. Could you imagine? A whole group of them went in and spied the land. And one who believed in the vision came back and said, Let's go, we can do it. And those who did not believe in the vision, those who refused to follow the leader, said we cannot do it because they are stronger than us. Many times you find that there are those who you should be leading and you think they are following, but they are not. They would have their own ideas, their own opinion, share it with others and sometimes cause others to go along. Now, according to Henry David Theodore, he said the secret of achievement is to hold a sure outcome in mind. Now Caleb had this sure outcome in mind and the other men did not have this sure outcome in mind. Caleb said, we can do it. Why Caleb was so sure that we could do it? He was sure because God said, you can do it. When I think of the purpose of vision, it is to view the end result before seeing it. Now having a forecast picture of what the outcome looked like. Someone has said, 
if you don't have a clear, articulated vision of the successful outcome for your assignment or project, how will you ever know if you are successful? In fact, how will you ever know if you have even finished if you don't have a clear vision of where you're going? In order to do so successfully, here are five suggested offered, not by me, but by someone else that I've read. And when I read it, I believed it. And I jotted down. I've been using it. And I wish to share with you. And I trust that you will find them helpful also. Number one, he said, if you really want to be successful, you must create a roadmap and a plan. If you want to be successful in anything, you must create a roadmap and a plan. Determine the steps that will take you to your successful end. That makes so much sense. And then secondly, select and prioritize your goals. Most of us have many goals we would like to achieve during various stages of our lives. Some are realized and some are not. That's life. Prioritization and focus is critical for achieving goals. Any book that you would read on business will tell you not to have too many goals at one time. At most, you want to have three to four major initiatives. Spreading yourself or your organization 10 won't lead to success. Sometimes someone is successful going towards success in two or three things and feel, I want to expand. I want to get in two or three more. And by getting in two or three more, it caused the individual and the businesses that had seemed to be successful to now fail. Because sucking from those businesses that have not even been able to sustain themselves to put into other businesses cause all businesses to go down. And then there's a third thing, he said, gain and de develop a mental picture. Develop a mental picture of what the win looks like and be able to articulate it well. If your goals are to complete a triathlon, then you got to be out there running daily in order to get that done. When no one else will run with you, you got to get out there and do it. Envision what you want the outcome to be. The best athlete in the world are exports of this. If the goal is to build your company to the best place to work in your area, what does that look like? Who will be on the team? What will the culture feel like? What will competitors say about you? Develop that mental picture. If your goal is to serve the Lord, these very same things must be true in your mind. Always remember, hard work and success comes together. As much as we may all like to believe it, achieving laughter goals takes on a ton of hard work and preservation. Having a vision is just the first step. Success can be defined in many ways, but successful people have not been handed down more opportunities than the rest of us. Hard work breeds opportunity. And then even more hard work is required to turn that opportunity into something great. My time is up for this morning. I will come back and share with you next morning on the need for a leader to have a vision. Without a vision, the people perish. The need for a leader to have a vision. Lord, I want to thank you so much for all that you have done for us. God, the vision that you have given us, you have charted for us the course that we must take. 
I ask that you will guide. I ask that you will direct. I ask, dear God, that you be with us. Help us day by day as we seek, Lord, to do your will. Have your way with us. We love you, praise you, and thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. May God bless you. Have a great day. Please share this with someone. You'll be surprised to know in some weeks, months, years to come, someone will just walk up to you and say, thank you for sharing that devotion that morning. I am where I am because of what I have heard. I needed those words of encouragement. God bless you. Have a great day.